Hey everybody, I'm Mike Levy and we're here in my shop today to take the very first look at RockShox's new self-adjusting flight attendant suspension system. Now we've got it fitted to this 170 millimeter travel specialized enduro to show it to you. That's right, this wasn't made for short travel race bikes, but actually for long travel enduro and trail bikes that would benefit from better pedaling performance. You know, like this red bike right here. We're gonna do a deep dive into all the tech in a few minutes, but the gist of Flight Attendant is that it uses SRAM's wireless access system, as well as a few sensors on the bike to have the fork and shock automatically adjust their compression damping to better suit rider inputs and the terrain. Now the whole idea here is a whole lot less thinking, absolutely no levers, and more efficiency. So what does flight attendant consist of? Well, first off, the fork and shock are both essentially just regular Zebs and Super Deluxe. But if you look at the black box that's hanging off of both of them, well, that's a dead giveaway that something else is going on. Let's start up with the fork. And the first thing you're gonna see is the control unit hanging off the back. Now, this is basically the brain of flight attendant. This is where the secret algorithm lives to tell the fork and shock what to do and when. You're also gonna find four different buttons and a whole bunch of LEDs. And we're gonna go over what those mean later on in this video. And if you want to run your suspension in manual mode, if you don't want flight attendant making the decisions for you, you can also adjust the fork's compression settings by pressing these buttons at the top. If you go to the bottom of the fork, you'll find the same rebound adjuster as you always found down there. And the same applies to the shock. You need to adjust rebound, you're gonna turn the same rebound dial. But again, if you wanna change the compression settings, that's low speed compression, these little buttons are what does it for both the fork and the shock. There's also an accelerometer and a gyro hidden in this little unit as well as in the shock. And those tell your bike whether you're on level ground, pointed up, pointed down, in the air, upside down, hopefully you're not upside down. And you're also gonna find a pedal sensor in your dub crank spindle. Now that only fits dub spindles for now, but that's a super important part of the equation because the system needs to know if you're pedaling or if you're coasting. The whole idea here is to turn your sluggish enduro bike, much like this one, into an efficient pedaling machine and to do it in an unobtrusive way that doesn't involve you flipping a switch and that feels natural and unobtrusive on the trail. And that's why the system is always going to default to full open when you're running it in the auto mode, unlike live valve. But when you come around a corner and there's some dumb steep uphill that you need to grunt over on your enduro bike, well, that's when flight attendant dials up the compression damping, which dials up the efficiency. That's when the control unit tells both the fork and the shock that, hey, you need a little more compression damping so Mike can haul his ass up and over this hill. A little motor turns on, that goes through the tiniest, cutest little gearbox you've ever seen, and it turns the compression rod to either add more compression, or if you're at the top of the hill and on your way down, take away compression damping. That part of how it functions is actually the same as the tiny motor and gearbox in the access derailleur and the seat post. Now the motor spins at like a zillion RPM and they have to use that tiny little gearbox to take all that spinning to just a little bit of movement. And that's what the gearbox is in there for. Flight attendant shares the same access batteries as the seat post and the derailleur. So that makes it easy to swap them if you drain one on a ride. It actually uses the same app as well to let you adjust suspension settings. You can actually change your compression settings on your fork and shock on your phone, which is pretty neat. And you could also change something called bias. There are five different bias settings. And if you add more bias, well, that means that the bike is gonna feel firmer more often. And if you subtract bias, that means that the bike will feel more open more often. Pretty simple. Now you could kind of think of bias adjustment as a low speed compression adjustment of sorts. And you could adjust how effective it is, either with the buttons on top of the control unit, that remember that controls both the fork and the shock, or you can use the SRAM app. 
Now I do realize that computers on bikes is a bit of a touchy subject in our circles, but I should mention that the Zeb and Super Deluxe Shock, well, they're basically just standard items. If I actually took the flight attendant units off of both, which you can do in your garage, you could just ride the fork and shock like they were just standard units, although I'm pretty sure SRAM does not want you to do that. Don't do that. But they do work like that. You can just take the flight attendant units off and they're standard units. In fact, to change the volume of the air spring in the Super Deluxe Shock, you need to remove the flight attendant unit. So if you wanna do that, that's something you'll need to do at home. It's just a couple screws on the back of the shock. Now, why am I telling you that? because it's important to me because I am terrible with computers and batteries. Basically, if it has a computer chip, it's not gonna work for me at some point. And if you're out on the trail and that happens to you with flight attendant, or let's say your batteries just die, you should know that both the fork and the shock will just continue working like a normal Zeb or a normal Super Deluxe. All right, I know you guys have a ton of questions and I might have some answers. So the first thing there is if the batteries die, like I just said, the shock and the fork revert to normal standard units. Now, speaking of batteries, let's talk about battery life. SRAM says that the entire system can be ridden for 24 hours nonstop. So if you're the kind of person who likes to do 24 hour races, you weirdo, this stuff is gonna work for you. Now. Separate units, SRAM says that you're gonna get 20 to 30 hours of life out of the fork battery and 30 to 40 hours of life out of the shock battery. Now there's one other battery that we need to talk about and that's the battery in the pedal sensor. Now depending how often you ride your bike, that's gonna last something like nine or 10 months. Another thing to point out is that you do not need an entire Axis ecosystem on your bike to run this kind of stuff. If you wanna run just flight attendant, that's just the suspension, the fork and the shock, and don't forget the pedal sensor, you can do that if you want, or you can combine the entire Axis family and control it all through the SRAM app. The next question you guys have for me is how much does this stuff weigh? Well, the answer is more than a standard Zeb and Super Deluxe. How much more? SRAM says 308 grams, so around three quarters of a pound is what you're gonna be adding to your enduro bike. Let us know in the comments if that's too much for you. I don't, I don't think it is. Next question, how does it do in the water? Not well, it electrocutes you. No, I'm just joking. Just like the other Axis components, definitely you can spray your bike. It's very water resistant. If you're gonna clean your bike, you definitely want the battery or that fancy little red cover in there. All you need to think about are the battery connections. Other than that, this stuff can easily shrug off rain, garden hose, anything you wanna do. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is that old LaPierre EI electronic suspension system from I think way back in 2012. For the record, this stuff has absolutely nothing to do with EI. And I actually asked RockShox about that and that was far more of a LaPierre system than a RockShox system. So this is entirely new. How long has RockShox been working on this thing? Would you believe me if I said nine years? They've managed to keep this system secret almost secret, for nine years until today. Now during that time, there's been a bunch of very rough looking prototypes and they even had Kona make two test mules to run this system on in the early days. In the early days of testing, RockShox says that they had some pretty funky setups. From giant boxes, that's where the computer lives, up on the handlebar, to 3D printed control units. Now, speaking of that control unit, the way that it sits behind the fork leg makes it look kinda exposed, especially to my knees when I unclip and go flying over the handlebars. But during testing, RockShox says they didn't break a single plastic prototype and the production units, well, those are aluminum, so those should definitely not break. One more note on development before we move on. If you go back to when the Charger 2 damper was debuted, that's five or six years ago, I think, that damper 
was actually redesigned to work with flight attendant. That's how long SRAM has been thinking about this stuff. All right, one last question. How much is this stuff gonna cost? Well, I don't have any numbers for you right now, but I can tell you that it's obviously gonna be more expensive than a standard Zeb and standard Super Deluxe. But if you wanna experience flight attendant this year, you're gonna to have to buy it on a complete bike. There are four brands that are gonna be specking it, Canyon, YT, Trek, and Specialized, on bikes ranging in travel from just 130 millimeters all the way up to 170 millimeters. Now, that's interesting to point out because something like this, a product designed to improve pedaling efficiency, sure sounds like it would be better suited to a racy short travel bike, right? But RockShox says, that a bike like this Specialized Enduro with 170 millimeters of travel and so, so pedaling abilities is the perfect example for flight attendant. You could put this stuff on and it transforms the bike into an efficient pedaling machine. All right, next up, we're gonna run through how you're gonna set up your flight attendant suspension because it's a little more complicated than a traditional fork and shock. Now the first thing you need to do to get your suspension running is wake up your pedal sensor, which is probably something you haven't had to do before. To do this, you hold down the button that's on the end of the crank spindle for five seconds and you're gonna see a flashing LED light. Next up, you need to pair the axis components. Now if you've paired an axis shifter and derailleur, you already know how to do this. You hold the button down on the control unit until it starts flashing and then you go around to the other axis components and press the pairing button. Boom, you're done, it's pretty easy. The next thing you're gonna do is set your suspension sag as per normal. Now the thing to note here is that flight attendant doesn't automatically turn to auto mode. So when you're doing this, it's gonna be working like normal traditional analog suspension and this is where you're gonna set up your sag. That's the most important part of any suspension setup. Next up, you're gonna have to calibrate the system. And to do that, you're gonna press the plus and minus buttons up at the forks control module, and you're gonna hold them for 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, those LEDs start blinking, and that lets you know that the suspension is ready to calibrate for the vertical axis. Now, what you're doing here is you're telling the fork and shock where they live in space. The next calibration you're gonna do, now that's for the angle of the bike. There are actually LEDs on the control unit that tell you if you're leading the bike over too far or not enough. It's a pretty neat system, and while there are a few steps, it's pretty foolproof once you get into it. All right, so let's think of this Enduro as a pie chart. I love pie charts. The pie chart is 80% downhill and 20% uphill, which is probably what it should be for a bike like this. What RockShox is trying to do with Flight Attendant is give you two pies. One pie, so delicious. It's 100% downhill, it's very tasty, and you wanna eat it all the time. What Flight Attendant also does is give you another pie, that's the climbing pie. Now the climbing pie is never gonna taste as good, but instead of being 20%, Flight Attendant takes this Enduro and it makes it maybe 60 or 70%. So it tastes a whole lot better and the bike just simply works better. All right, I know there are plenty of you out there that aren't interested in having computers on your bikes or the added complication, the added cost, or the added weight. Now for you guys, normal suspension that costs, I don't know, half as much as this stuff, it's not going anywhere. Traditional analog suspension, it's still out there. But this is a real option now. So let us know what you think about this stuff. Are you interested in flight attendant? Does this make sense on your enduro bike or your trail bike? Or are you more of a reach down and flip the lever guy? Let us know in the comments what you think about flight attendant and if you'd run it on your bike.